Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'd like to use the first uh, little bit of the sermon time here to talk about uh, regenerative agriculture, which is um, the theme for this year's Interfaith Power and Light uh, Earth Day program. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that not everybody has, has heard this term. Um, I know I hadn't until I actually started working in the environmental space about a year and a half ago. Um, but since then, I can tell you, it's really become clear that this is a incredibly uh, big solution. Um, environmentalists are really excited about uh, regenerative agriculture and what it can do to help us solve a, a whole range of, of environmental problems that we've sort of gotten ourselves into uh, over the last century or so. Um, if I can, there we go. Um, so first of all, let's talk about how we do farming now. Um, so currently, um, most of uh, most of the at least non-organic farming world is all about um, creating the biggest crop yields um, as, as, as fast as possible. Um, so to do that, um, a lot of chemical fertilizer is used. Um, the crops that are planted are often, you know, rows and rows of, of the same crop, whatever is the most uh, a lucrative or, or what people want to buy. Um, there are a lot of uh, pesticides that are used, obviously, as we all know, um, and the, the land is tilled, right? Uh, when a plow goes through, it turns over all the, all the soil. So these are sort of the modern agricultural practices that we're practicing, and they do have their benefits. They, you know, can churn out a lot of food um, really fast, <laughs> but they also have uh, pretty enormous costs, as we've learned in uh, the last uh, couple of decades. Um, they really degrade the soil um, because although chemical fertilizer has, you know, the nutrients that the crops need, it doesn't support the microorganisms in the soil. Um, so the soil has to be replenished all the time, and the sort of ecosystem around it degrades really fast. Um, the soil can also erode, it can blow away, or if, when it waters, it can, it's watered, it can er erode away, um, and you can actually lose a, a bunch of the soil that way. Um, we talked about, too, biodiversity loss, um, not only microorganisms in the soil, but the whole sort of uh, ecosystem around, um, around uh, farming uh, that was once in balance can degrade pretty fast when you're just sort of pumping in artificial stuff. Um, and, that, and that actually also leads to lower, less nutritious uh, crop yields. So the system that we have um, has, has some major problems. Um, and just to quote one statistic, um, soil can erode 10 to 100 times faster using these sort of these artificial practices than it otherwise would, which is pretty shocking. So this is sort of literally the definition of unsustainable. It cannot be sustained, right? Um, it, it, you, you lose as much as you gain, so, and probably more. So what is regenerative agriculture? Regenerative agriculture um, is about uh, restoring the health, vitality, and evolutionary capability of whole living systems. So what does that mean? Well, it's not a super new idea, right? Um, this is actually, basically describing practices that um, indigenous peoples of North America have known and practiced for centuries. Um, and what it means is sort of rather than treating um, agricultural uh, plot as a extractive thing that we wanna get as much food out of it as fast as we possibly can, it's thinking about the whole ecosystem around that food. And keeping that ecosystem in balance and thinking about, you know, the pollinators and the natural <laughs> pest control and um, all of the things that a, a healthy, vibrant ecosystem can provide that have withered away because of these sort of artificial means that, that we've been using. Um, so there are a number of uh, solutions in the regenerative agriculture space that can help do this. Um, one of them is this idea of cover crops, which is simply, um, you know, the age old idea of crop rotation, right? You don't plant the same thing over and over again, um, but you plant 
uh, you know, different things in rotation. And you can actually also plant things in between the rows of your cash crop that help fix the soil, help revitalize the soil. Um, another one, which I'm sure we've all heard, of, heard about is composting. Um, you can collect your food scraps, uh, put them in a bin, and it's the most natural and fertilizing fertilizer out there. Um, and it really helps uh, bring those microorganisms back into the soil. Um, they called silvopasture, which as you can see here is basically where you plant trees and have livestock graze on some of the same land that you're actually growing your crops, which sounds like a bad idea, but is actually a great way to um, have that ecosystem uh, sort of come back around, around the crops that you're growing and obviously the manure that the livestock leaf is very fertile as well. Um, and then this uh, this picture is of something called contour planting, where instead of planting in straight rows, you actually say, okay, how do we plant this so that the land, the contours of the land um, are represented in, in how we're planting it, and that helps keep the soil from eroding. So those are a few uh, of the practices that regenerative agriculture entails. Um, there are many more, but again, the basic idea is just, you know, don't just think about how do we get the biggest crop yield, but how do we Keep the whole ecosystem in balance and that has numerous benefits um, one is that you you know the soil can be restored um, you can keep this you know this fertile uh, land that can you know grow things year after year um, another another is that there's better outcomes for farmers um, when the soil is healthier um, the farmers are actually you know able to grow better crops and they don't have, they also don't have to pay for tons of chemicals, <laughs> chemical fertilizer, chemical uh, pesticides. Um, and there's been some early studies that actually farmers, small farmers at least get an economic benefit from using these practices. Um, and finally, healthier food, right? No pesticides. And actually the food is uh, more nutritious um, when it's grown um, in healthier soil. So there are tremendous benefits just from sort of the farming standpoint, but um, there's also another environmental problem that we're facing, as I'm sure you all know, and this is something that's near and dear to my own heart. Um, I have spent the last year and a half working for um, a family friend in the area, actually, who's developing an app called Climate Action Now. And the goal of this app is to, you know, do something about the really deep climate crisis that we now find ourselves in and, and, and allowing people, you know, anyone with a phone to basically do something. So we have a lot of work to do on, on climate change. There's so many things that we need to do. We need to draw down carbon really, really fast, uh, as I'm sure we all know. And it turns out regenerative agriculture is actually uh, an amazing way to do that. Um, right now, the, because the soil has become so, um, so degraded, um, soil is, or carbon is actually leaking out of much of the soil um, in our, in our uh, farmland and rangeland. Um, and soil is this massive carbon sink, right? Um, 2.7 trillion tons of carbon is stored in soil worldwide. That is second only to the ocean as a major carbon sink. Um, so all this carbon that's stored um, right now as I said, some of it is leaking out into the air and contributing to the problem. Um, but what regenerative agriculture could do is reverse that story, it could turn it on its head. Um, turns out that 250 million tons per year of carbon could be drawn down. Not only could we stop the emissions of this carbon from the soil, but we could turn agriculture and rangeland into a carbon sink that draws down 250 million tons of carbon per year in the US alone. Um, so that's huge. Uh, when I said people were really excited about regenerative agriculture, that's a big reason why. Um, there's, there was one study that uh, somebody I talked to in the state government cited. I couldn't find it myself, disclaimer, but um, it said that um, if we covered all open land in California with an inch of compost, that the soil would be restored enough that it would sequester all of the emissions of the entire state of California. You know, all the cars we drive, all the, all the industry, we're the world's fifth largest GDP if we were a country, and we could sequester all those emissions by restoring the soil.
crazy. So um, with that, I just want to really kind of emphasize that regenerative agriculture is really uh, something we got to we got to start doing and many people are starting to do it um, and it's really exciting to see. Um, and I know you're probably thinking, okay, what can I do now? You know, how do I actually contribute to the, to the solution here? And I'll just say, stay tuned, because uh, we do have a number of second hours uh, coming up um, that will talk about that, of what can we actually do to support this? Um, one of the, the big solutions is uh, we can support community, uh, community supported agriculture, which I know many of us already do, the fruit boxes. We love our fruit box in our house. Um, and another is uh, next week at 11 o'clock, I'll be uh, taking everybody through the app, that, which is now in the app store and we can all download it together and uh, take our first action and uh, start getting, getting to work on regenerative agriculture and many, many other parts of the uh, climate crisis as well. Um, so yeah, thank you. And I'll hand it over to Linda. Thank you, Matthew. That was great to get that introduction to what's new and not new. So I'm going to introduce to you what's new and not new. This is the revised 21st century Genesis. Okay. In the beginning, God created the Big Bang, which formed the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was in the universe. And God said, let there be a solar system with a sun and thus was born light. God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness by rotating the earth. God called the light day and the darkness night and there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate the clouds from the water. So God made the expanse and filled it with nitrogen and oxygen and carbon. And it was so. God called the expanse sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground soil and filled it with microorganisms, nematodes, and mycorrhizal fungi. Then God created topsoil for the worms, millipedes, and isopods. Now, I had to kind of find out what isopods were. So you know those little roly polies, those things that roll up into the little balls, that's what isopods are, okay? Giving each a purpose, and God saw that it was good. The waters gathered, and God called them seas from which evaporation would happen and turn into rain. Then God said, let the ground produce vegetation with roots to absorb the rain and leaves to capture carbon and give up of oxygen. Let there be various kinds of plants and trees, each with their own purpose and their own kind of root microbes and microbiota. And the ground produced an abundance of living soil and plant life. And God saw that it was good and worked well together and each creation doing what it was designed to do. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. Now you see what we've been given? We had been given this rich, vibrant soil that was there to produce and to be um, part of a living ecosystem. And over the years, obviously we've changed it, not sort of knowing exactly what we were doing, but we changed it. If you pick up living soil that's full of organisms, there are more organisms in a handful of soil than there are people who have ever lived on this earth. 
that's how rich it is. It's, to me, the soil is, is like a miracle and it's a miracle what it gives us. And interestingly enough, so two nights ago, I'm reading my Union of Concerned Scientists report. And what are they talking about? Soil. So I'll just read you a little excerpt from it. it. Goes along with some of the things that Matthew was saying. So a new Union of Concerned Scientists report has found that at a current rates of erosion, in just 15 years, the United States is at risk of losing more than eight times the amount of topsoil lost in the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. Now it takes a century or more for an inch to form naturally. Um, and healthy living soil needs fewer chemical treatments, stores carbon, and acts as a sponge protecting farmers and their communities against floods and drought and keeping fertilizer from polluting waterways. So we understand now that this whole regenerative agriculture or this protecting the soil isn't just about us either. Think about that when you're eating your lunch. To me, it's like sacred food that we have, that we ingest. That food is connected to everyone. The farmers, the farm workers, the soil which prevents flooding, which you know prevents new all these fertilizers and whatnot going into our waterways. Now, what can we do about it? There are many things we can do. You will find out later from Karen as we're giving our offering that there are actions, simple actions we can take to really make a difference. Matthew's gonna do a session next Sunday Dolly is going to do a session on community supported agriculture on May 16th. These are all things we can start thinking about. So remember that we are entrusted with this soil and we can do something by supporting those who are working to repair it. Amen.